Plain City was a, a great small town. I mean, we, we learned how to work hard, learned how to haul hay, learned how to cut asparagus. It taught us, you know, how to really sacrifice time uh, and it would reward you by, by that hard, hard work. Once summer hit, it was up to the ballpark first thing every morning. Everybody parked their cars around the park. If you had a home run, they'd raid honk their horn as you ran around. You really thought you'd get the big times. A lot of your big trucking companies in our industry today are from Plain City. Our mothers and dads were uh, very good friends. We went water skiing uh, as families. Grandpa Knight was probably more of a trucker than any of the other names that came out of there earlier because not only would he grow his own produce, but then he would haul it to Salt Lake and sell it. Plank City was a great place for a kid to grow up. First day of business was July 19th, 1990. Just decided to go in the trucking business. I had a non-compete with Swift for five years and it expired and Kevin and Gary and Keith decided to join me and so we started it. We just thought we could make it a better job for a driver. Randy was kind of the senior member. He had his own business total, which was the springboard for a night. He also had great relationships with the import-export community. Randy was uh, actually part owner of Swift uh, going back prior to 1985, and uh, Kevin and Gary and Keith uh, were all very uh, instrumental uh, in the operations uh, after Randy left. And Kevin, from day one, has really been focused on costs and he's never lost focus. He reads a lot, he understands the business very, very well. Gary had been over all of the operations, and dispatchers, and salespeople, so he knew the sales and the operations side. Keith's just, just a hard, hard trench digger, kind of like my dad was, just, just a very, very hard worker, and we'll work 24-7, basically, to get the job done. I still remember the day when Gary and Kevin gave their resignation to Swift. They showed up over at Total. We didn't have any space for them, and so Gary and Kevin and Randy all were in the same office. Me and Kevin moved into Randy's office. It was not a big office. You know, we went from being in, in uh, an environment where we were comfortable, but working very hard, to, a, to an environment where we were working very hard, but had risk uh, on top of that. You just planned on working almost every Saturday, it seemed like. I would load my kids up and they'd go play in the conference room while I did my work. On Monday morning, I went down to this uh, cotton warehouse building, walked up to Kevin and I said, I don't see any trucks. And he says, no, he says, we don't have any trucks, we don't have any trailers, we don't have any customers, and we don't have any drivers. I says, okay, this is kind of an interesting trucking company. We don't have anything, he said, but we're gonna get them. Middle of July came along, trucks were ready to start coming in, and the equipment was, was stunning. Um, red trucks with white trailers. We put the signs on the doors and got our authority on the doors of the trucks and got our trailers. And We hauled three loads the first day we opened. We kind of had this little bet on who are going to get the first loads. Well, everybody's got a little different version, right? I'm not sure if, if Gary or Corey sold those. I think there may still be an argument over who uh, sold the first load. I got the first load at night transportation. Corey always takes credit for it. I'm like, Corey, what do you mean you were working for me? <laughs> it's probably Gary or Keith. <laughs> That was a big, exciting day. Going public, it, it, it gave us access to capital, so it was important in our progression. When you become a public company, 
you become much more disciplined in a lot of areas of your business. We just felt it was a good way to reward our, our, our people, our employees, you know, with different type of options and things. We were debt free after six years, beat the goal of 10, and have never looked back. We wouldn't be the company we are today. We wouldn't be providing the number of jobs we are today. We wouldn't have the vast array of services that we provide today. It was never about one person or the other. It was about the best decision for the company. And the thing that I think was perhaps the most endearing about that, if you will, is that they did that because they knew that it would benefit our employees. We stayed in that little warehouse and became successful in the right way. It's probably the biggest fire I'd ever seen in my life. I literally, I'm standing there going, it's going to go, it's going to burn. We begin tonight with a firefight. Crews still on scene. As night falls, bright orange flames still engulf hundreds of pallets. Our leadership was tremendously concerned. Um, not so much about the building, it was about let's make sure that we've got ways to communicate with our drivers and communicate with our people. And there came a point where we were convinced that it was going to overtake our building and overtake our data infrastructure. The only backup computer system we had was in the fuel building which was certain to, to go. And so we made the decision to move our two million dollar IT system on a forklift over top of speed bumps and fire hoses and drive it a half mile as a last ditch effort to keep the data up and running and to save our company. It was impressive how our leadership team stepped up and, and, and directed things to make sure that our business didn't suffer. We're, we're no stronger than the strength of our teams and the individuals in our company. They're key. I mean, they're everything that we have. I mean, no way could just, just, it, just us um, founders, uh, you, you know, make this business work. There's al always been a lot of dedication and a lot of talent, and, and I think we've always felt like, you know, we're going to do well. One thing in trucking is we'll always have a job because there's nothing that a truck doesn't move. Our drivers are so important. They're willing to make sacrifices that most of us wouldn't be willing to do. It's the reason that our company is what it is today. When I started with Knight, we had 75 trucks, and today we're over 4,700. We're still in the early innings. There's a lot more to come. Because I can still remember, you know, those early days and, and how things went. There's no question that uh, because of our culture that we were able to, to, to do the things that we've been able to do in this industry over the last 25 years. We do the same things that every other carrier does. We pick up loads, we hire drivers, and we make them successful, but we just, we get up a little earlier and we stay a little later, and that's about it. You know, any problem in our business, when we get a group of people around a table in this company that can think and be creative, then, then great things happen. There's something about this place that makes us all want to give and do our very best and put our heart into it. Night transportation has been like a family to me. You know, the caring, and that's what we had. And we still have, it's just that we've gotten bigger. At the core of our vision uh, and our culture is just integrity. So you don't ever, ever want to change your culture, your values, your integrity, um, you know, how you treat people. Um, you know, if, if we'll keep that intact, then I, I feel we'll, you know, we'll be good for another 25. It's a very difficult industry, and they've got to really congratulate them on what they've done over the last few years. It's an awesome responsibility and uh, nearly an overwhelming responsibility uh, to try and take another generation to do what the founding generation did for this business. The good thing is we have amazing people and amazing people that have been developed and challenged and mentored by that founding generation to which we'll always be grateful. And now we have a chance to try and keep this momentum alive and make the next 25 as good as the first. 25. 25. It's not just a number. It's our life. Our dedication. 
that represents a united force. Destined. Determined. Driven. For one another. For the world. For better. For worse. For life. A unified vision led by dreams and hard work. Backed by the belief that whatever we do, wherever we go, we will never be alone. We wouldn't have come this far alone. Gone as far as we have. Grown as much as we have. We did it together, together.